All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to create an icon font uh, totally free using Inkscape. This will allow you to uh, use an icon font on any program such as Microsoft Word. You can use it in apps such as KLWP. And if you're interested in the logo design contest, we're going to create a SVG uh, logo. We're going to create a TTF file so that you can enter that into the contest. If you're interested, anybody can do this. It's totally free. All it takes is a little bit of your time to download the software and then let your imagination run. So this is for anybody. Uh, Inkscape, totally free. It works for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Just make sure you follow the directions when you download it. I do know for Mac that you do also need to install XQuartz. So once you get the software downloaded, let's go into Inkscape and see what it looks like. When you first open Inkscape, it will look a little something like this. Um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And this is our page, but I want this page to be a square. So some things I do, file, document properties, let's set our units to pixels. And I want that rectangle to be a square. So I'm just going to do like 400 by 400. It doesn't really matter what you pick here. And what that did, and let's also do the checkerboard background. That's going to give us this background so that when we start cutting stuff out, we can verify that it is cutting all the way through. This is our page, our 400 by 400 pixel. Again, with the magnifying glass, if we click on this one here, it'll zoom that square to fit the window. I'm just going to back out one so I have a little bit of room. And now we're ready to start drawing. Uh, using the circle tool, I'm going to drag out a circle. Now, if yours is not red, that's totally fine. Let's go up to Object, and let's go to Fill and Stroke. It's a little menu over here to the right, and we can minimize this menu, and that's a good thing to do so we can have quick access to this. Inside of Stroke and Paint, make sure there is no stroke, so just use that X there. And for Fill, let's set it to black. So minimizing that, let's also go to Object, and let's do a Line and Distribute. That's going to give us another menu over here as well. And what this will allow us to do, as long as we have it set relative to page, that's this square page that we created, we can center it vertically and horizontally. So now our ellipse is centered in this page, the square page that we have here. And also what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go to my select arrow tool. Um, this is where we can adjust the size, as you can see here. But to make it a perfect circle up here at the top, I'm going to do 300 for my width and 300 for my height. You can pick whatever you want. I'm just staying something less than 400, my page size. So we definitely need to align and distribute again relative to the page. Our circle is in the center. Now we're ready to add some text. So our text tool, let's type in, I'm going to do sample logo. And I want to center this text, not to the page right now, but I'm just centering the text up, uh, these two pieces here. I'm going to change its size. You can adjust the font and all that stuff too, but we're going to have another way to mess around with this font when we start editing nodes. Let's go to Fill and Stroke. Make sure we have no stroke. Let's set our fill to red for right now, and let's move this to where it's on top of our circle. Now, layering is important. Layering <laughs> is important here. Uh, right now, the text is on top of the circle. We have two different items here. Now, if I take my text and I use this little thing right here, this is going to move it to the back uh, or the bottom, so to speak. Now the circle's on top. I have my circle selected. If I move it to the bottom, the text is now back on top. As long as our text is on top and the circle's beneath it and we have these things where we want, I'm going to align and distribute both of these items again just to make sure everything is nice and centered. Doing that for both the text and the circle. And we can select all. You can do that by dragging over everything or keyboard shortcut on the Mac is Control A. Control is the button you have to use in Inkscape. It's a little bit weird. But I have both of these items selected. If I go to Path and I go to Difference, it's taken these two items, the circle and the text, and it's made it one item. And that one item is this sample logo. So we can't delete the text anymore. So make sure your text was how you wanted it. If not, just go back and redo that process again. But now if we align and distribute, we have just one item here. All right. Now let's talk about our node tool. Our node tool, if we click on that, you have a whole bunch of squares that pop up. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to select my node tool again. So we can adjust each individual node. For example, I'm going to take this P and I'm going to do something like this. 
and I don't want any snapping right now. So I think if I click this, that'll take all the snapping off. Like we can cut snapping on and off. For now, I don't want any snapping. I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. And I'm going to double click right about there to add another node. And let's take these nodes that you see, these little squares, um, these right here are sharp. They're, they're uh, corner nodes or whatever you want to call them, but I want to make that smooth. So using my node tool, if I click on that one and I click that button right there, we now have a smooth piece to that right there. Uh, maybe you want to do something like this as well. I'm going to come to this node and I'm just giving you some options. I'm going to delete that node and uh, let's see what that looks like. We'll go to my selection tool. So you know we've changed totally the way that P looks. Let's do something with the A. So back in my node tool, I'm going to drag this corner of my A out and I'm going to add a node here and I'm going to make that node a smooth node. And I'm going to drag that back up because I don't want that as pronounced. And I'm going to add a new node here. I'm going to drag this one out and I'm going to make that a smooth node as well. Let's see what that looks like. So notice we have definitely changed the A and the P. Um, you can do something similar with the M. We'll add a node right here. And just like that, you know, that totally changes the way things look. So that font that you pick, in all honesty, uh, the font is not important once you come in here and start editing your node. So I don't like the way that looks. So I'm just going to do uh, Control Z a little bit and go back to maybe something like that. Of course, you can do your snapping and all that stuff, but we definitely have changed the way it looks already. Not only that, let's go, and here's a little uh, way that we can, I want to get rid of this O, let's get rid of this O right here. How do we get rid of that O? Here's what we can do. We can take our rectangle tool, and I'm just going to drag out a red rectangle that covers that O just like that. Go to Fill and Stroke. Let's make sure the stroke, no stroke, fill, black. And you may say, oh, okay, well, now it's covered up. But what you want to do right now, we have two objects. Make sure, let me go back to my selection tool and let me do Control A. It says I have two objects selected. Well, the thing is, this uh, red, that red one that we made black, I want to actually take that and kind of like glue it on top of it. And it's called the union. I want to bring those two pieces together. So if I go to path and I go to union, it took away that dotted line. And now if I zoom out, let me zoom this to fit. Uh, now when I start dragging this thing around with my selection tool, it's just one object. All these nodes that have been moved, the O is gone. Well, what are we going to do with that O? We're going to pop a star. Uh, let's do a star. So we got our polygon tool convex and concave and I'm going to do a five pointed star so dragging that out I'm going to make it red for right now again no stroke and that star it's a little bit too big for my taste in terms of like the the way the corners are so we can actually take this star and we can edit it now or we can edit it later but I'm going to get and edit a little bit right now I'm going to do something kind of like that let's take that star Let's drag it here. And let's zoom on in a little bit on this because I definitely want to uh, change the way that star looks. All right, taking that star, it's on top of this single object. This sample logo circle with the words cut out, all of that's one object. And then we have this star, this one object. So if we do control A, notice we have two objects and I'm going to subtract this from that. So path difference. So now we have a star in the place of that O that we removed technically, but really we did a black rectangle on top of that O and then we did a union to really kind of glue all of that together to make it one object. And now what we do have, if we zoom back out, all of this is still one object. All right. Let's go to align and distribute and let's center everything relative to our page. Now let's do one more piece here to customize this logo a little bit more. I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle over here. And I'm going to set its fill and stroke to black or the fill to black, no stroke. And what I want to do with this 
is I can you can go in here with the node tool as well and you can round off the corners you may not notice the corners getting rounded off on the inside but they are getting rounded off right there um, it's the same things happening to all four corners now let's do a command a with our selection tool not command a but control a we have two objects we have all this sample logo junk and then this new rounded rectangle let's go to path and let's go to exclusion exclusion will take away the two parts where they intersect notice this little rounded part here is excluded we can see our checkerboard background and that's what's been excluded because it's where they overlap and then one more piece here let's go do a convex polygon I want to do an octagon so I'm going to pick eight corners and I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to drag it down somewhere in here let me go to my field for this and just see what I'm working with right now. So I'm definitely outside of my shape, but that's fine. Or I'm outside of my page, but that's okay for right now. What I want to do with this is, let's check out our node tool and see what we can do with this. Our node tool, we can change the size of it. I don't want it to be that big, but something like that for right now. And I'm going to go to my selection tool, control A. It may, the keyboard shortcuts are probably different um, if you're using a Windows computer. And now we have two objects, all this black stuff and this red. Let's go to path and let's go to difference. So we're cutting out that oct the octagon. What little bit was overlapping, we're cutting it out. Let's select our shape and let's realign and distribute. I don't think much is going to change there, just a little bit because we did change the actual size of this shape. But it's centered relative to all of these pieces now. And to finish this off, let's come down here using our node tool. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to take uh, this one here. I'm going to make that a smooth node. And let's see here. Let's just add an extra node in here. I'm going to take that one and drag it up. And I'm going to smooth that out as well. And I tell you what, let's just go ahead and smooth that one while we're at it. And let's zoom back out. To fit and now we've you know that was an octagon for crying out loud I never would have known it was an octagon to begin with and again all of this now with us doing this this is all one object so you know as you can see throwing shapes in here editing the actual text um, removing text uh, using the difference to cut pieces out using the exclusion um, you can go up here and you can start throwing in new pieces like I can throw a skinny rectangle right here just randomly if I go back to my select tool and select all and I do path and difference it's going to cut out that part so you hopefully this is giving you some ideas of how you can edit text um, import shapes cut the shapes out using the exclusion filter editing your nodes hopefully this kind of pushes you in the right direction and maybe motivates you to learn a little bit more about this software there are tons of other things that we can do inside of Inkscape but I wanted to you know show you how you can do this for free enter a contest or heck just create icon fonts now let's convert this to a TTF it's under file save as and I want to save this to my desktop Now I'm going to do a plain SVG. You can do an Inkscape, but I'm going to do plain for right now. So save. There is our sample logo, and we want to import this into IcoMoon. So over at IcoMoon, import icons. I'm going to select that sample logo, and there it is. Clicking on that, generate font, and let's go ahead and make this correspond to the letter A when we actually install this font or when you send it to me for the uh, contest I can just use the letter A let's make it easy let's all use the letter A if you're submitting this for a contest now you could import more SVGs if you're creating multiple logos or multiple icon fonts and you can do an A B C D E F G etc underneath preferences give it a name sample logo is what I'm going to use here uh, I have these settings here because I like to use this in Apple Motion and this right here works good for rotations and creating three-dimensional sample logos 1024 50 and 0 now this will be the name of the font once we download it we have it set to correspond to the letter A and let's go ahead and download that now if this stuff is not working you have to maybe adjust you know these little pieces here to get these things to show up by the way so downloading that so here's that downloaded file it's a zip file 
want to extract that there's the folder and now what we want to get out of this is the sample logo TTF but I'm going to go ahead and install this real quick on my Mac so that you can see that the letter A will actually show us our logo so there's my sample logo font and now I'm going to open up Microsoft Word and verify that the letter A will work so inside of Microsoft Word I'm just going to type in a few letters and everywhere we see an A uh, once we change the font here it should so applying the sample logo font if I apply that notice it does show these logos in here and it only shows them for where I had the letter A's at if I do like control Z see how I have an A here and an A here but all these other ones aren't working because I didn't have anything applied to those from Icomoon so I'm just going to delete this back to here it looks real small if I highlight that and change the size boom there's our sample logo but it's actually the letter A in our font that we just created and we can and you can use this on anything uh, Microsoft Word uh, Apple Motion Adobe uh, what have you uh, these things that you create in Inkscape for free uh, you can import them and, and bam you got it so you know hopefully this will motivate some of you to you know participate in the logo design contest using the icon font and before I leave you what you need to do again to submit this for the logo contest is the following when you downloaded that file that uh, and you unzip that file inside of fonts you got this sample logo TTF that's one thing that I want you to submit as well as the sample logo SVG that we created in Inkscape so those two items right there if you right click on Mac and you compress it or on Windows if you zip it it's going to create that zip file and that's what you submit based on the instructions that I gave in the logo design contest go check out that video I just uploaded it two or three days ago and if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Also, like I said, this can be applied to all of your other graphics things. For KLWP folks, you can definitely import these icon fonts directly into KLWP. I have some videos on that as well. But with this tutorial now, hopefully I've motivated you to uh, learn how to you know, dive into Inkscape a little bit more and create your own icon fonts. And there you have it. That's how you can create a basic icon font. And hopefully you will consider submitting this to a contest. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.